Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Pastor Mike here. I'm um, getting us ready for midday prayer. I hope you don't hear the fan running on my computer. I can't seem to get rid of it. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, hopefully you're able to hear me uh, and everything will be clear today as we are gathering up for midday prayer. Um, it's good to be with you again, and um, we will get started in just a minute. Let me know you're here. I see Debbie's with us and Malia's with us. Um, good afternoon to you, Malia, and to you too as well, Debbie. And um, we'll get started in just a minute. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can put those into the uh, chat or in the comment section, and I'll be glad to include the names of those folks in our prayers as we go forward in our prayer time. And uh, so we're ready to get started. So <clears throat> we'll get started today um, as we breathe in the breath of God and we breathe out our cares and our concerns. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our doubts and our despairs. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. So today's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter. It's what we're reading together as a synod and as we read through the daily text each day. So this is, uh, the subtitle of this is called The Mission of the Twelve. It's kind of um, a transition for the disciples from disciple to apostle. Um, so the Gospel writer writes, uh, it's, um, let's see, Mark 6, 7 to 13. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. So here it is, this, um, this time when the disciples have been uh, called by Jesus to, um, to go out. Uh, that's what the, the word apostle means. It means to uh, head out um, and, um, and to go about, uh, so to speak. So the disciples are called to, to go out and then to begin to travel through their um, the surrounding area, their surrounding villages. Now there's some, it's a pretty quick um, kind of apostles, apostleship training uh, session. Uh, Jesus basically says, basically, you know, something a close close to this, if I summarize it. Uh, travel light, you know, don't pack a whole bunch of stuff with you, just kind of head out. Um, kind of, I get the impression of kind of head out into life as you know it today. Um, you know, uh, well, be welcomed as people welcome you. And, 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 and a lot of that is, uh, is around uh, meeting people where they are with no expectations uh, of, of them gathering in as much as, as our being called to go out and uh, to meet people where they are to uh, proclaim the good news and uh, when that good news is accepted and heard to rejoice and when it is not to simply move on um, and, uh, and and that, that the call there for repentance is a call to return to God it's a call to turn around to experience a change of heart um, it's not a call to say I'm sorry it's a call to live differently uh, um, as a, as a, a, a disciple of uh, Jesus himself. Um, and so I think a lot of times when we, we think about going out into the world, um, what we need to remember is sometimes the best way we um, uh, live into our discipleship, live into our role as apostle, is to simply love our neighbor, uh, to, um, to um, walk with them, to live with them, to, to be with them, uh, and to let them see through the love that we share with them that that is a love that comes from God and it is a love that um, they too um, can receive from God. 
Um, that's really what um, I think sharing the good news is all about. It's not about uh, beating people into submission, so to speak, um, as much as it is simply walking with and accompanying them. Uh, and in these challenging times that we, as we continue to emerge from uh, what was into what God is creating new in front of us, um, I think it's our, our time together uh, with one another is even more precious and more um, even more telling uh, of the love of God. Um, we had fellowship time uh, uh, briefly yesterday for the first time in over two years. It was, um, it was in fact, a, a great time for folks to gather um, and to catch up with one another. We will continue to gather and to catch up with one another as we are able, um, as we move forward. Uh, so it is really good to see all of you. Um, we will be uh, hearing from our friends in Camp Hill. They are going to sing a song, this beautiful song, one of my favorites, about uh, uh, Jesus' call on our life and our call to follow him. And then we'll get back together and um, pray together. So uh, I got I saw Lynn's note about praying for her successful recovery from her rotator cuff surgery. We will definitely do that. Um, and um, we will um, we will go forward from there uh, as we hear the song and then we'll get back together and pray again. If you have anyone to put into the uh, prayer list, uh, please list their name in the comments and I'll be glad to include them. Uh, so here, here are our friends from Camp Hill and I'll be back with you in just a second.
Yeah, Lynn, that's one of my favorites as well. Uh, our friends from Camp Hill do a really good job with that. It's good to hear from them again. Um, and now we gather together and we pray. Uh, so let us pray as God's people called together into community. Good and gracious God, we do give you thanks for the beauty of this day and for the gift of this day itself. Uh, and also for the gift of community, the gift of time to gather as your people, to hear your word, to uh, sing your word, and to be encouraged and nourished by your word. Um, help us to go out as Jesus sends us out, um, traveling light and showing the great love that you have for us and for all of your people with all of those whom we meet. That's, that is, it is a love that can shift and change lives in ways that uh, lead to the kingdom of heaven coming near in our lives. There is no doubt about that. We ask God that your healing presence be with all of those who are suffering, um, with Matt and Sherry Burgey, um, with Lynn as she heals from her surgery, with Dee and her family, as they grieve and as they uh, uh, recover from illness, with Kathy, Margaret Fulcomer, Laura Dara, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fails, Rebecca Neal, Jeff, Glenn Hardesty, Connie and Herb Koss, McKenna Day, Barbara Dareth, Jane Cox, Lauren Mueller, Woody and Charlotte Wallach, Sabrina, Sean Fitzsimmons, Mia Zinn and family, Trent, Donna, Dave, and Nancy, Lynn Smith, Jared and Samantha, Linda Heitelman, Peggy Helwig, Shirley Hillman, uh, um, Allie Watts, Ron, Nicholas McDonald, Judy Kelly, Ebony, and all those God that we name aloud are silently in our hearts at this time. Gracious God, we're two weeks in to this Easter season, a time when we celebrate the gift of life that comes to all of us through the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And at no other time, maybe, or no better time in our lives, do we need to hear that, that hope of resurrection than that time when we experience grief, the death of someone that we love very dearly. Um, and um, even when it's hard for us to, to feel that love and that hope, I think when we gather together as, as friends and family, surround one another with that love, I think that's how that hope comes through in the lives of our, our grieving siblings. We have two families that are grieving this, this day. Um, the family and friends of um, Edward Dusang on his death. It's a friend of mine from, um, from Texas's father who died this, 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 this past week. Um, and then the family and friends of Kyle Miller, uh, fellow disciple here at First Lutheran who died this past week as well. Surround their families with a love that heals, a love that shines hope, and a love that lets them know that even in their grief, they are not forgotten. That those that they love are now resting in your, your glory and are resting in your peace. Until that day when we are all gathered together uh, as your people, living in your presence, where death and dying will be no more, there'll be no more pain and no more sorrow. There will only be your great love and the light that comes from that great love. And now, God, as your people called together, we pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And now as your people called together again, we breathe in the breath of God and we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our haste and our apprehension. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our work and our worry. And now until we join together again on Wednesday for midday prayer, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, today and always. Uh, I'll see you again on Wednesday. Um, and until then, have a great week. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>